G'day watchers, welcome back to the channel and to this relatively busy video today. Uh, today I want to take a look at watch crystals, you know, that transparent bit of material that goes in front of the dial to make the dial visible so you can, you know, look at the hands and tell the time really. A, a key uh, and very important feature in all watches unless you, you know, you're having a braille watch or something that doesn't actually need a crystal to protect uh, the dial, almost all watches uh, that you're going to be using is going to have some sort of crystal, some sort of glass at the front to uh, protect the dial from the elements that you know, you're not going to damage the hands or the liquid crystal display as it may be. Um, so, uh, you know, I've got five different watches here covering the three uh, different primary examples of crystal. Uh, and really, we're talking about acrylic uh, in the example on the left. Uh, to hardened mineral crystals, uh, the next two watches, to sapphire, of course. That, that's really the three different types of crystals that you're going to be seeing in almost all watches. If you're aware of another type of crystal, another type of transparent material, you know, transaluminium from Star Trek or whatever, please let me know and I'd be interested in what watch you have that has that different material. Okay, so I'm going to start on the the extreme ends actually so I'm gonna cover acrylic and then I'm gonna cover sapphire because they're at the ends of the spectrum just to contrast what the the differences are thank you again to Jody from just one more watch uh, channel for supplying these two pieces for review and because this is the first uh, real uh, piece with an acrylic crystal at the front uh, I, I thought I'd take the chance to do this particular video so um, now, what I have uh, as the example of a watch with an acrylic crystal is the Seagull 1963 reissue. This, you know, lovely uh, vintage chronograph, a remake of a, a historic piece, the first Chinese uh, produced chronograph, really for the Air Force. You know, they were, uh, you know, officially uh, appointed to produce watches for the Chinese Air Force, you know, back in the 1960s. So this crystal is acrylic um, and I guess more properly known as polymethyl methacrylate. Uh, this includes uh, Omega's Hesalite crystal and, and various other, uh, I guess, propriety names that you might have come across. So acrylic uh, is of relatively low cost. It, it is the cheapest alternative. Uh, I guess, generally speaking, you're going to be able to get uh, acrylic for the cheapest cost per size. Uh, the scratch resistance is low. It is very low, and some people have, you know, said that you can look at it wrong, and it will it will get a scratch on it. You know, this one is of course uh, in thankfully pristine condition. You know, Jody's really kept this in very good condition. Uh, there are no scratches that I have spots uh, on it. No, I haven't gone. To look at it with a magnifying glass but you know to the naked eye there's nothing big anyway um, so scratch resistance very low but you know break resistance shatter resistance very very high and some people say this is almost unbreakable and indeed in my research the amount of energy that you would have to put into a piece of acrylic to break it is phenomenal and uh, uh, you know, maybe it, it really does deserve the, uh, uh, I guess, the moniker of being the unbreakable glass. You know, let me know if you have seen an example of uh, a watch breaking, you know, experience an example of an acrylic glass watch uh, breaking here. Um, you know, and then transparency wise, well, you know, moderate. Um, there, there are going to be, uh, I guess, cloudiness that develops over time. You may have seen some examples of that. It's, it's not uh, the highest uh, crystal clarity that you can get. Uh, and then distortion wise, it has very interesting refractive properties. So, you know, you can see as I turn it on the side, you're getting, you know, some really very interesting distortion, um, uh, I guess, effects here. And that's neither a plus or minus. I think it does add a lot of character to watches with an acrylic crystal, but if um, I guess clarity is of utmost importance. You don't want distortion, you know, so it, it's neither a plus or minus. I, I'm just going to say that the distortion factor is the highest with this type of glass. 
Uh, and, and then just an example of costs. Well, I've got my daughter's uh, kids watch here. Well, this one is, as far as I can tell, acrylic and it's uh, scratched very easily. I don't know if I can capture it, but there's a, there's a very definite scratch on the glass just over the 12 o'clock mark there. Uh, you know, my daughter isn't exactly super active. She hasn't worn this a lot, but already uh, there's already a scratch that developed on this uh, crystal here. You know, but unbreakable, so it's it's great for kids' watches, uh, and then it's also relatively low cost, so they can make pieces like this uh, without you know having the glass add a significant proportion of the cost there. So you know that's acrylic, and then on the other end here, I've got examples of sapphire. So for for mineral and sapphire, I've got an example of a flat and of a dome one. So uh, this is my Phoebus Great White. Uh, that I reviewed uh, earlier. So this is an example of a flat uh, sapphire crystal, right? You can see that it's a perfectly flat piece with that cyclops state there, uh, just you know breaking the surface there. Now sapphire is the most expensive option here. It is the highest cost. I don't know exactly what the factor is, uh, but in all my reading, you know, there's no doubt sapphire is the most expensive. This is synthetic sapphire that's going to be used in watches, not, not natural occurring sapphire. Uh, but because of the, the processes that goes into making it, uh, well, you have to pay more to get sapphire glass. Scratch resistance, extremely high, right? You know, I mean, I've got many sapphire watches that are featured on the channel. I've got a number in the family none of them have any scratches. Uh, of course you can scratch it, I've seen examples of that, but none of the ones that I've come across have any marring on the surface. They are all perfect. So, you know, certainly the scratch resistance uh, rating is well deserved. Uh, some people say you can really only scratch it with another sapphire or with a diamond. Um, you know, I don't know how true that is, but certainly they really, you know, keep uh, the, the the smoothness of the surface very, very well. Um, shatter resistance. Well, I'm going to say moderate. Um, now, people say that sapphire is very, very hard, but very brittle. Therefore, if you do damage it, it is going to break into pieces. It's not going to scratch. It's just going to crack and break into pieces. It's going to shatter. Um, now, I, I've not had any examples of that in my hand or in people I've spoken to. Uh, let me know if you've uh, experienced that. I would be very interested to hear what circumstances uh, did you experience to shatter a sapphire glass on a watch. Transparency, it is, I think, the best, you know, really, uh, in terms of the clarity, the light that passes through it, it is crystal clear. You know, all the sapphire watches uh, that I've seen uh, do share that characteristic. You know, this one's my uh, Oris Equistate, of course, a, a watch that I reviewed a long, long time ago and it's a perennial favorite of mine. Uh, this one does have a domed sapphire crystal. And you know, you do get a distortion effect. Uh, as I turn it on the side, you can see, you know, hopefully that translates to the camera. There's the distortion effect you get from a domed sapphire. but the distortion is relatively low. It's certainly nowhere near uh, distortion you're going to get with an acrylic crystal like the one I first showed you there. Okay, so that's the that's the characteristics of sapphire glass or sapphire crystal. Uh, I guess is the more proper term for uh, for this. It's not a type of glass. It's a type of crystal. Okay, and then and then you have the middle. You have the middle ground. You have mineral crystal. Mineral. Um, glass or hardened mineral glass as is almost always the case on watches there's going to be some hardening process that they apply to uh, the mineral crystal to make it slightly more resistant to scratching uh, and you know this includes Seiko's hardmix crystal of course you know what discussion of watch glass can be complete without including an example of hardlex one of the best known hardened mineral crystals out there and uh, they they do seem to do a good job, you know. That's make it a bit better than the average mineral glass you find in other watches. Cost wise, moderate. It's somewhere between sapphire and acrylic. I don't know if it's closer to sapphire or closer to acrylic. I, I can't find that information easily, but you know everything tells me that uh, it's somewhere in between those two extremes. Scratch resistance. Well, it's in between. Right, it's certainly scratchable. 
uh, easier to scratch, uh, you know, definitely easier to scratch than sapphire, uh, but not as easy to scratch as acrylic. Is it closer to sapphire? In my experience, it probably is closer to sapphire than, than acrylic, you know, so, um, for example, the hard leg swatches I have very, very well performing. I think I have one example of a hard leg, my, my orange monster that has a couple of nicks if you, if you look closely. Otherwise, you know, all the ones I've come across, they're, they're in pristine condition. You know, they're not, they don't appear to be that easy to scratch, at least in my experience. But, you know, let me know what you think of hard legs or other mineral glasses, which may be easier to scratch. Um, so, you know, you've already seen this is an example of a uh, flat mineral glass uh, and the transparency is, is good. You know, it's, it's high. I don't think it's as good as sapphire. Uh, I think in lighting indoors like this, it's very, very difficult to tell the difference. But I think in sunlight with mineral glass watches, I do see you know, a bit of increased cloudiness sometimes, a bit of noise in the light that passes through mineral glass. That's, that's my experience. You know, I do think there is a difference in the degree of transparency of mineral versus sapphire. Now distortion, well, let's take a look at a watch with a domed mineral. So this one uh, you've seen before, my Ingersoll Lawrence GMT, uh, sporting a nicely domed mineral glass. You know, yes, it's there. I think the distortion uh, level is low to moderate, you know, definitely more than sapphire. I think, you know, the, the refractive characteristics does lend to a distortion effect that you can see at an angle there. Uh, but again, uh, not not the level of acrylic crystal. That's just what I've noticed. You know, let me know what you think of your experience of uh, uh, domed mineral crystals and and the distortion effects that you have noticed in your watches. I'm very keen to hear uh, individual personal experiences about uh, these glasses, these different classes of uh, you know watch crystals that you can get. So, guys, there you have it. Um, that's my little yarn about the differences in watch crystals. I think there is a place for all of them. Um, I, I think the, the hardened mineral, you know, is, is a little bit more scratch resistant than just midline. I think it's, it's got a, a good combination of being somewhat scratch resistant, not quite sapphire, but also somewhat, you know, strong at uh, resisting shattering, uh, you know, not quite as strong as acrylic, but I, I think it's closer towards acrylic than than sapphire you know because I, I have not had any watches in my possession shatter when, when they are you know covered by mineral crystal uh, i've seen examples online let me know what your own experiences are i'm very keen to hear that so guys thank you for watching uh, if you enjoy my videos do consider subscribing i'm learning new things about horology just like this thing about uh, watch crystals and i share it right here on the channel always trying to be objective and unbiased and I put out new content every week. Guys, thank you again for watching and as always, I will catch you next time.